Hey there folks, got a long ass battle for you against Flarp22 who PM'd me through YouTube asking me for a battle. I was more than happy to oblige, but the battle that resulted was, I believe, the second longest battle I have ever had. Uh, the first longest also being with this team. This is, I mean, this is a stall team, and with stall battles, they tend to be really, really long. So this battle lasted, um, something like 30 minutes of real life time. Uh, no, longer than that, because playback time was half an hour, so it was probably more like an hour, probably even more, um, in actual game time, and we were just really glad that we didn't DC or anything. Anyway, uh, I led off with my Rotom Moform, he led off with his Galvantula, I was fearing a little bit that that thing would be scarfed, but I calced it and thought, and was pretty sure that I could survive a Bug Buzz, um, and so I switch out, or, so he switches out also, so I don't think he actually is scarfed. I get the switch advantage, uh, and the resulting matchup after a bunch of switching is Tangela versus Tangrowth. Tangela ends up being kind of an awesome Pokemon in that matchup because um, it's faster. Uh, the thing about Tangela is that with the Violet especially, it's got better stats. Um, now, you know, Tangela and Tangrowth are both actually really amazing Pokemon, and you kind of wonder, why are they NU? And the reason is probably because they, um, you know, they're pretty much the same Pokemon, it's just they play very, very similarly, unless you're going for physical Tangrowth. Um, and so consequently, they kind of sap each other's usage, and that brings them down to below the, the cutoffs in each tier. So that's why they're all the way down in NU. Um, you also kind of see this with Chansey and Blissey. Uh, the, you know, the, the eternal question is which Pokemon do you use, Chansey or Blissey? And Chansey almost dropped down to Yu Yu the last cycle. I, uh, in fact, put it wrong in my uh, update video uh, at first, but my tier update video. But anyway, uh, whatever. I've been talking about really nothing. My Tangela is going to get put to sleep by his Tangrowth. Uh, usually Tangela is the best option for me for Sleep Potter. It's the most useless Pokemon on my team. But based on his team, I'm actually thinking that Tangela is going to be an incredibly important Pokemon considering he's got two physical attackers uh, that are weak to grass type moves. So that would be Feraligator and Tang... Uh, and not Tangrowth, I'm sorry. Feraligator and Sand Slash. And, uh, you know, both could be running either Bug or Ice type moves, but I don't... You know, it's... It's not 100%, and even so, uh, physical attacking, or physically defensive, uh, Eviolite, Tangela can kind of sponge those heads pretty well, considering neither will be stabbed. Anyway, here I do a really weird move. I send out my Quillfish against his uh, Sand Slash. Why would, you, why would I do that? Why the hell would I send out a Pokemon that's weak against Earthquake against a Pokemon that has Earthquake and has Stab Earthquake? And the answer is because I thought I was going to go for Rapid Spin. Now, why did I stay in? The answer is because I thought, well, I'd have to be an idiot to stay in with a Quillfish. He, he'd obviously be predicting the switch out. He would go for like a Mega Horn or something. Not Mega Horn, I'm sorry, X Scissor or something. But no, he decides not to overpredict. <coughs> and it cost me. Anyway, here, I get an unfortunate crit. Take out his Galvantula. Now, I'm not sure whether that crit mattered in the sense that I'm not sure whether um, I would have KO'd on the next turn with Leaf Storm, but either way, lame, crit, whatever. Going to go out into my Georgia third, I was really thinking, based on how I'd used this Typhlosion earlier, that it was Scarfed. Instead, now I see it's Sunny Day. Pretty sure I can take a... I, I, th I think I calculated, I see that I know that I can take uh, Solar Beam, and I take it quite well. Uh, he's Life Orb, which is interesting, so it probably doesn't run Eruption. I go ahead and go for the uh, Thunder Wave, paralyze this thing, and then I decide, you know what, what the hell? At that range of health, I'm pretty sure I can KO with a Scald even in the sun. And indeed I do. So that is a dead Typhlosion that is great because I've got so many Grass-type Pokemon on my team. Oh yeah, and a Steel-type. So, huge threat taken care of. Now out is going to come his Feraligator. Gonna go out into my Rotom, predicting him to Dragon Dance. Um, I see here uh, that he goes for Crunch, so this might very well be the Dragon Dance set. Um, but he's not Banded, he's not Scarf. Both good things to know. Uh, I go for the Leaf Storm, trying to get the KO, but he is gonna switch out. Uh, I mean, obviously, but I just didn't. Again, I'm the thing about Stall is that you gotta play really conservatively to really do well in Stall. Prediction is nice, but really you want to go with the numbers. You want to go with well, you want to go with what's the worst case scenario, um, and basically plan for the worst case scenario and. Um, make sure that you the number one thing that you don't want to happen in a stall battle is for you to lose a pokemon because every pokemon you lose makes it that much harder to win uh, because it gives you one less pokemon to switch out into you lose one 
more uh, utility Pokemon, one more either physical or special wall. So really the key to stall is keeping your Pokemon alive. So that, if that means that you miss out on a KO, then you miss out on a KO. But really the point is to keep your Pokemon alive uh, if at all possible. Uh, and oh yeah, entry hazards are nice. <laughs> That's, those are my words of wisdom. Anyway, here I'm predicting the switch out into one of his two um, grass-based uh, or grass-weak physical attackers. And uh, so we each get off our wishes. And now I know I'm going to be able to scare him out, but even so, I don't want to overpredict. And I'm really fearing that that thing has an X has the X scissor. Um, so I go for another Leaf Storm. Based on the amount of damage this does, by the way, I'm thinking that uh, his Audino might actually not be the same set as mine. I think it might be physically defensive rather than specially defensive, or at least mixed defenses, because um, that did a lot more than I would have expected. I'll put up in the calc. I'll put up the calcs to see whether I'm just misremembering that. But from what I remember. Uh, yeah. So, anyway, he finally goes for Rapid Spin, gets rid of those spikes. I was really surprised that he didn't do it earlier, but really I didn't give him the chance to. So, uh, my Dragon Tail misses, which is lame, but whatever. Anyway, uh, he goes for Earthquake, doesn't get me down to my sturdy at all. I managed to get off Stealth Rocks, and I'm actually going to be a above half after this, but even so, I'm going to want to switch. I'm not going to want to take another Earthquake. Going to go out into Rotom, uh, just predicting the Earthquake. It turns out he's got a Night Slash, so... That means that he doesn't run a bug type move, he doesn't run X scissors. So that is good to know, because that means that my grass type Pokemon have nothing to fear from this guy. Anyway, again, go for the Leaf Storm, not wanting to overpredict. Um, get his Audino down pretty low, but with Wish, plus Protect, plus Regenerator, it's not going to matter even in the slightest. He's going to go out into Tangrowth to sponge the next Leaf Storm, you know, just in case he was predicting or something. Uh, just in case he. I just was hoping that I would catch him over predicting. Um, but he's playing really well too, so this is a really good matchup so far. It's 5-5. Five, five. No, is it 5-5? Five, five? Yes, it's 5-5. Five, five. Um, we both lost one Pokemon, but. No, I'm sorry, it's 5-4. I'm in the lead because he lost his Galvantula to a crit as well. So, anyway. Um. I go for another wish. Um, just gonna spread those wishes around, get as much help around as possible. Uh, he goes for a crunch, gets a crit! Mother eleven. Anyway, uh, go for a heal bell here. Uh, Gargon wakes up. Uh, that, I'm thinking, I really do need it around to counter a lot of this Pokemon. So, really, it was time to go for the heal bell. He's gonna withdraw, go out into his Tangrowth. I am going to um, go for the Toxic, so that's going to put this thing on a timer. Now, you might think, why would either of us bother with status moves when we both have Clarence? Uh, the answer is that, well, it kind of limits your options, and it forces you to go for the Heal Bell, forces you to go out into your Cleric, forces you to go for the Heal Bell, waste the turn. Uh, here, I was predicting, you know, why would I send in a Pokemon that's weak to Grass-type moves? into a Tangrowth. The answer was because I was pretty sure he'd go for the, the Sleep Powder, and George III, I decided, would be the best Sleep Powder on my team. Yes, it would be a good counter for, or good at least check for Sand Slash, but it's phys especially defensive, not, uh, especially defensive, not physically defensive, and so I just, especially if that thing got off a Swords Dance, uh, I'm talking about uh, Sand Slash here, I just don't think that it would be a really good matchup, um, and so really it uh, Slow King did its job, and I'm fine with being Sleep Fodder for now. Uh, and I'm hoping actually I'm going to be able to leave it as Sleep Fodder uh, to prevent him from using uh, Sleep Powder against any of my more important Pokemon. Um, but yeah, so I got Hatterack out here. You know, I was talking earlier about the fact that Sturdy is uh, kind of useless on the Steelix because it's really hard to one-hit KO a Steelix, but it's not really worth it for me to switch it off for Sheer Force because there are very, very few attacks that would benefit from Sheer Force. Uh, Dragon Tail, by the way, I found out uh, that Dragon Tail is not affected by Sheer Force. The way I found this out was actually in-game. One of the Elite Four, I must have actually been uh, the champion in Black and White 2, had a Sheer Force Dredagon, and... Um, yeah, it dragon tailed me out, and it was quite obviously Sheer Force because it had a Life Orb and wasn't taking Life Orb damage from a lot of the other attacks. So definitely Sheer Force, and good to know that Sheer Force does not negate the switch out part of Dragon Tail. Um, anyway, I've been just been talking randomly. I'm I am at full health, uh, so I could. Uh, so anyway, I was predicting the switch out into this guy, and so even though he's going to be back up to full health, uh, he's going to be forced to switch out, and here I go for yet another Leaf Storm, just predicting him to overpredict at one point in his life, 
and uh, go for the Leaf Storm. And now I've got to start. Uh, now I'm starting to worry because I'm got running pretty low on Leaf Storm PP. No lie, I was. I think I've used up like four at this point, maybe five. And I'm like, well, I'm gonna run out pretty soon, and I need those Leaf Storms because my uh, my Rotom is that is really fast. And you know, if my only hope about speeding. Well, not outspeeding, but it's, it's my only hope of outspeeding, actually, a Dragon Dance uh, for Alligator. But anyway, back to the battle. Uh, Tangela versus Tangrowth. Um, pretty sure I'm going to switch out Tangela for... Um, pretty sure I'm going to switch out Tangela for Among Us, now that Among Us is released with, um, with Regenerator. Uh, it's not... As defensive as a Pokemon, it doesn't have as good... Uh, it actually doesn't have as good special attack, but it does have that very nice poison typing which allows it to resist um, many type of, types of moves, including well, grass. I mean, they already resist grass, but you know what I mean. Anyway, um, it basically is better typing and gives you a better stab, um, or an additional stab, basically. Um, so anyway, go for the hidden power. Oh yeah, it allows you to resist fighting. That's going to be really crucial, I think, in uh, the new metagame, considering that um, Throw is now released with Sleep Talk. <laughs> That's scary! Guts and Sleep Talk, that is that that keeps me up at night with nightmares. Um <laughs> I, I exaggerate. But still, um Tangle versus Tangrowth yet again. I can just go for the hidden power uh fire here. It's gonna do a lot of damage. I don't think it's gonna KO, but it should at least do a decent chunk. Get him down pretty low. He's gonna go for the hidden power. Either hidden power fire or hidden power ice. No way to know for certain. Gets me down to below half. That's not good. Here, I, I'm, that's going to force me to go for another Hidden Power Fire, um, even though the switch out was very obvious, basically, just in case he predicted me to um, stay in and go for Giga Drain, predicting him to switch out. So, again, the idea with Stall is to play it safe. Anyway, I put his Cleric to sleep! It is so awesome when you can put an opponent's Cleric to sleep, and it sucks so bad when your own Cleric is put to sleep. So, Adino is asleep, I go for the Giga Drain, uh, and I was actually, actually expecting a switch out, but he's actually going to stay in, which was a good move. Uh, gets, what, the first turn, or the, the first turn wake up. Lame sauce, by the way. He's going to switch out with a, um, he's going to switch out, uh, I go for a sleep powder again, expecting to stay in. Uh, putting this thing to sleep is nice. I really wish I'd Giga Drained it, though, because I think I might have KO'd, but, eh, oh well. Um, still having the thing to sleep means one less threat to worry about, assuming he doesn't get first turn wake. Go for a Giga Drain, just thinking of the best move here. I'm not in any danger of running out of any other PP, uh, besides those Leaf Storms. Um, although, this battle could conceivably have lasted long enough that that could have been a concern. Um, <clears throat> here he goes for the Toxic, and now this is going to be a big issue. This is going to be a really big issue, um, because I'm just want, going to want to stay in with Gargon, expecting to, at one point, send out either this guy or his Tangro. Uh, uh, I keep calling it Tangro. I don't know why I keep calling it Sam Slash Tangro. It's so weird. Anyway, I really wish I had predicted this. Um, here, I, uh, you know, again, I'm playing uh, what's the worst case scenario, and the worst case scenario would be uh, me staying in, going for the Hidden Power Fire, and him going for an Ice Punch. I don't think he has Ice Punch at this point, but, um, yeah, so in, and now here, what am I going to do? I'm going to go for the Hidden Power Fire, which means that he can just regenerate stall me and go out, go back into his Water type for Alligator, which he does do, and I could be predicting this, but again, the the um, results of me over-predicting are much worse than the results of me not overpredicting. Here, I go for the Giga Drain. Here he stays in, expecting me to um, go for a Hidden Power Fire. He gets a crit, which is a huge deal. But I go for the Giga Drain, and so in the end, I come out ahead. What he said uh, after the battle was that um, he was hoping for the Waterfall Flinch, but you can't really bank on Waterfall Flinches. Now I'm going to have to switch out because I'm down to 40 HP. I'm dead next turn, no matter what. I could go for the hidden power fire here, but he could also switch out and I could lose my I could lose my Gargon, and that would have been awful. <coughs> anyway, he he plays it, uh, expecting my switch out. A good move for him. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna have to go for the heal bell, even though it makes me a little nervous against the Tangro. Luckily he switches out Tangro, so that's nice. Um, don't have to fear too much in terms of that thing putting my cleric to sleep. So huge boon for Heal Bell. His, my Heal Bell undoes three of his um, three of his uh, statuses, so that's 
one turn uh, he's, versus three turns that he's doing all those statuses. Anyway, he's obviously going to switch out. Really, I switched in Tangela here exclusively to get off um, some regenerator. Uh, but here I decided, what the hell, uh, go for the Giga Drain. But the idea is, recovery with regenerator is actually really, it's really awesome and kind of reliable. Uh, got into Hatterack, my Steelix. Um, he goes for the Wish. And here, uh, let's see, I think I'm, he's going to go for the Heal Belt, stay in. And I'm just going to go for the Earthquake. And I believe here I get a crit. I do, yeah. I get a crit. And so that is going to take out his Audino. So, that sucks. And this battle could easily have gone on another 50, 100 turns had that not happened. But losing your Audino um, means that that's one regenerated Pokemon down, that's your Cleric down, that's your Wish Passer down, and this battle is basically over. Uh, I think he'd actually send me a message saying GG when he lost his Audino, but he didn't run. Uh, props him for not running. And so here I go for the Hidden Power Fire. I'm gonna get him down pretty low. I know that I can take one Hidden Power Fire or Ice from this guy. Uh, so here I go for another Hidden Power Fire, fully expecting it to KO. I think he actually survives the Sliver. Yeah, he does. He survives the Sliver. Um, he's gonna go for another Hidden Power here. Not another Hidden Power. He's going to go for the first Hidden Power here. Doesn't get a crit of his own. Uh, gets me down pretty low. Uh, here I'm gonna go for the Giga Drain, expecting maybe to switch out. He doesn't, he stays in. Um, but either way, it was gonna KO at that range of health. So, down goes his Tangrowth, and now he's down to his last Pokemon. Uh, he's going to go ahead and go for the Night Slash. I actually take that rather well, um, because I'm physically defensive, e violate and whatnot. I don't one hit KO though. Kinda of surprising. But with all that health, re uh, I get back. It's kind of awesome, and this is going to be the end of the battle. I'm going to get you drained, and that is going to be it. So, great game, Flarp22. Folks, I cannot believe you watched this whole thing. In fact, I'm betting that a lot of you didn't. Uh, but I hope the folks that you, you that stayed uh, and watched enjoyed it. So long.